let's talk about the skill of refactoring code. Refactoring is a transformation of the source code in order to improve its qualities, such as readability and testability, without changing the original behavior. There is no better way to improve at refactoring than to practice, so in this video we're going to do a refactoring exercise. Here's what we're going to be refactoring. I have a customer service class here with a single add customer method inside. And this method is almost a hundred lines of code. Our task is to untangle this mess and refactor this method into something that is more readable, more maintainable, more extensible, and more testable. I already wrote some unit tests that verify the behavior of the customer service, and you can see them here. We're going to be using them throughout our refactoring to make sure that we did not break anything. So if I run the unit test right now, before we start our refactoring, you will see that all 13 unit tests are passing. Now let's take a look at what I have inside of the add customer method. So the first big block of code here is responsible for validating the input arguments. We're checking the first name, last name, email, and the age of the customer. Then we have this part of the code here that's fetching a company by the company ID, creating a new customer. And then we have an interesting piece of code that's responsible for doing a credit limit calculation. This calculation is based on the company type and also on the customer arguments and it's using a customer credit service client to perform this credit limit calculation. And then the last part of the code is doing some check to see if the customer is above or below the credit limit. And lastly, it's adding the customer to the repository. Let's also look at the implementations of the helper services. So the customer repository only contains an in-memory list of customers and the add method just attaches the customer to this list. The company repository allows us to fetch a single company by the ID and I have a list of predefined companies. You can see that I've got the regular client, important and very important client denoted by the type property value. The customer itself is just a bag of data containing properties and the customer credit service client contains some very simple rules. If the customer is John Doe, then the credit limit is 500. If the customer is older than 40, then the credit limit is 600 and otherwise is 249.9. So this is our initial setup. Now let's see how we're going to refactor the customer service. And I'm going to be refactoring in a different assembly where I have the same source code that I just showed you. I'm just going to leave the before and after version separated so that we can compare them at the end. I'm going to start this refactoring by just decomposing the add customer method into some smaller components. First of all, I've got this piece of code here that's responsible for validation. So I'm going to do an extract method refactoring and let's call this is valid. This method is going to return a Boolean value and if the input arguments are not valid, then we're going to return false. The code was already applying the early return principle which you can see here. So if any of these arguments is invalid, we are returning from our method. So this is the early return principle and we're going to also be applying it here. We're just going to move all of the validation logic into one method to make it easier to read and to make the is valid method easier to extend in the future. Let's see if we can improve the is valid method a bit more. One thing that catches my eye is that I have a calculation here to determine what is the age of the customer. So I can also extract this into another helper method to improve the readability and let's call this calculate age. This method will have the date of birth argument. It's going to apply the same logic by taking the current time and then calculating the age of the customer. I prefer making methods that depend on the current time testable. So I introduce an argument to represent the current time. So let's make an argument called now and we're going to simplify the calculate age method and then specify date time now as the argument in the caller. If you want to, you can also simplify this into a one liner and you can write it as date of birth date greater than now add years and then you specify minus age. This particular check takes care of when the date of birth still hasn't occurred in the current year. So let's leave the calculate age method like this and I want to focus on the is valid method. You can see that I have a bunch of if else statements all returning false and at some point if no more validations are left we just return true. So I'm going to begin to inline all of these checks 
So I'll begin with calculate age and now I can get rid of the age variable and what I can do is merge all of these statements. So if the first name is null or empty or the last name is null or empty or the email is invalid, I'm going to return false or the customer's age is also invalid I'm going to return false. So if any of these evaluate to true, I can return false. One more thing I like to do to improve readability is to define constants for some numeric variables. So let's call this the minimum age. So the minimum age is 21 and I can convert this into a constant. And one more thing you can do at this point is to convert this entire Boolean statement into an expression. So I'm going to use the replace with return refactor that's going to take my if statement that you can see here and convert it into a Boolean expression. The important part is that it's also going to negate all of the checks here to make sure that all of the arguments are valid. And I'm going to also simplify the email check here to make sure that it also contains the at and the dot characters. So this is the final form of the is valid method. I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm going to leave it like this. Now let's focus on the other aspects of the customer service. The next thing that is hampering the testability of my code is that this class is also responsible for instantiating its external dependencies. So you've got the company repository here, the customer credit service client here and here, and also the customer repository. So how I'm going to solve this is by introducing dependency injection. And since I'm running in .NET 8, I have access to primary constructors. So let's use that feature for the conciseness. And I'm going to create a company repository argument then another one for the customer repository. And lastly, I'm going to create an argument for the customer credit service client. So let's call this the credit service. And what I'm going to do now is get rid of the initializations here to the company repository, to the credit service client, and here also, and also the customer repository at the end. And now we're going to be using the parameters that are part of the primary constructor. This is a fairly new feature in C Sharp 12, but if you don't want to use this, you can go with the constructor injection. And there's even now refactoring to convert to an explicit constructor, which would look like this. But I'm going to leave the primary constructor because I like this concise syntax. So what did we achieve by introducing dependency injection? Well, now I can go ahead and do an extract interface refactoring on all of these services services and I'm going to start to depend on the interfaces and not the implementations, which allows me to be able to mock these dependencies and make the testing of my customer service class much easier. However, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to leave the concrete dependencies that I have here. And let's move on to the next aspect that I want to refactor in the customer service. And that is the credit limit calculation. This part of the code is violating the single responsibility principle because my customer service is now responsible for creating the customer and adding it to the repository but also performing the credit limit calculation. The credit limit calculation is part of my business logic and I want to extract it entirely outside of the customer service into some new class. So let's do an extract method refactoring first and let's call this the calculate credit limit. It's going to have three dependencies, the credit service and the company and the customer and it's going to wrap the same logic that I had before. The next thing I want to do is to make this method pure. So it's going to be returning the credit limit and the has credit limit values instead of assigning them to the customer. So let's update the return type from void into a tuple because I don't want to be bothered with creating a type. And let's call this the has credit limit. This will be a Boolean. And then a decimal value that's going to represent the actual credit limit. And now I'm going to update my method. So here I'm going to return a new tuple containing false for has credit limit and it's going to contain null or default for the credit limit value. So now I can get rid of the assignment here and even get rid of the comment and I can also get rid of the else statement here because I have an early return. Then the next part of code here also assigns the has credit limit and the credit limit value so I'm going to get rid of the assignments and I'm going to return true for the has credit limit property. And then the next part is going to be my credit limit value. And then I'm going to apply the same logic below 
and I'm going to return true and the credit limit that was returned by my service. Notice that here I'm multiplying the credit limit by two if this company is an important client. I can even get rid of the else block entirely, but we're going to do this later. Now I need to update my consuming code, which is calling my calculate credit limit method. And this method returns a tuple. So a really cool thing you can do with tuples is deconstruction. And for example, you can deconstruct into the customer properties. So if I specify customer has credit limit and the customer credit limit property, I can then take the value returned by my calculate credit limit call and deconstruct it into these property values. It's a nice way to simplify the syntax, but I also want to take care of the single responsibility principle. So I'm going to do a refactoring here and I'm going to use the extract class refactoring. I'll make the calculate credit limit public so that it can be called from my customer service. And let's call the new class, the credit limit calculator. I'm going to move this into its own file and let's apply this refactoring. So now I have a new type that is the credit limit calculator. It contains my credit limit service and the company and customer. I'm going to make the customer credit service client a dependency of this type. So let's use a primary constructor again and simplify our arguments in the calculate credit limit method. Of course, I'll have to make this method non-static to be able to access the credit service. And I'm going to simplify the name of this method into just calculate because the class itself is called the credit limit calculator. Now, if I go back to my customer service, I will have to replace the dependency on the customer credit service client with the credit limit calculator. So let's add this dependency. And then we're going to turn this from a static method call into an instance call and pass in the company and the customer. And let's focus our attention on the credit limit calculator. What I like to do when refactoring code is try to observe if any patterns are appearing. And if you take a closer look here, you will see that there definitely are some patterns. For example, we have a check on the company type. And if this is a very important client, then we do something. Again, a check on the company type. And if it's just an important client, we're going to do something. And then if you take a look at the credit limit calculation logic, you're going to notice that we have an identical call in both of these if else branches. And the only difference is if this is an important client, we're going to multiply the credit limit by two. And if not, we're just going to return the credit limit. And I see that I missed to remove the assignment here. So I'm going to get rid of those. So this is what we are left with. So what I'm trying to say here is that we can replace these if else statements with a switch statement. And let's see what that would look like. So let's say switch, and I'm going to pass in the company type. And then let's write a few cases. If this is a very important client, then we're going to return a false for the has credit limit and then null for the credit limit value. We don't need to write the break statement because we have a return. Then the next case is when this is an important client. So I'm going to write a block for this section and I'm going to copy the implementation I have here. And then the default case, I'm going to copy what I have in the else statement here, which is just the credit limit calculation and then returning the calculated values. So the switch statement that I just wrote replaces all of the if else blocks. So I'm going to delete them and we're just left with the switch statement. A more concise way to represent this would be using a switch expression. And we can actually do this by doing an extract method refactoring on the credit limit. So let's do that refactor by extracting this calculation into a get credit limit method, for example. Then I can call this method in both of my statements here. So if it's an important client or in the default case, and at this point I can just inline the credit limit variable. So the default case makes it simple. Let's go to this and I can remove the braces. And in the important client case, I'm going to do the same and also multiply the result by two because this is part of our business logic. And this is what we are left with in the switch statement. And now it's easy to just take this switch statement and convert it into a switch expression. And you end up with a really concise implementation. I'm also going to get rid of this method argument and make this non-static so that it can use the credit service. And I also need to fix the method calls here. The next thing that bothers me is being attached to a string here to represent the company type. 
it would be much better if this was an enum. So I can go to the company class and introduce an enum to represent the company type. And I'm going to have the same values that I had here. So let's say this is a regular client, an important client, and then a very important client. What I will do is replace the company type as a string with an enum value, and then I'm going to replace the strings with enum values. So let's actually call this the regular client. Then I've got the important client. I'm also going to rename it. And lastly, I've got the very important client, which I'm going to rename to match the previous naming convention. Now I have to go back to my credit limit calculator and replace this with my enums. So now I'm getting a bit more readability and it's easier for me to extend this in the future if I need to add another company type. So with these changes, I achieved that my credit limit calculator class is now responsible for the credit limit calculation and the customer service is responsible to only orchestrate all of these methods together. At this point, I would probably call it a day because I'm pretty happy with the results of these refactorings. I removed about 30% of the code from the customer service. I added dependency injection and the add customer method is much more readable in my opinion. A few more improvements you could make is to start pushing logic down into the domain. If you want to be doing some sort of domain driven design approach, for example, one improvement I could make is to move this into a method on the customer. So let's create a method like that. And I'm going to navigate to the customer class and expose one method. So let's call this is under credit limit. And this evaluates to true if the customer has a credit limit and the credit limit value is under 500. So now I can go back to my customer service and just say, if the customer is under the credit limit, then you're going to return false. So let's check if we actually managed to refactor this code. And this will only be true if all of our unit tests are passing. So what I'm going to do is instead of rewriting the test cases here, I'm going to create a copy of my test class. Let's call this the customer service after tests. And I'm going to remove the namespace reference here. And I want to reference the customer service from the after namespace. Now this one has a bunch of dependencies that I'm going to need to create. So let's create a new company repository, a new customer repository, a new credit limit calculator that requires a customer credit service client. Now I'm going to have to fix this in all of my test cases. So let's just do some copy paste programming. And then I'm going to run my test cases and see if any of the test cases are broken. So let's run the tests for the refactored version and see if they are passing. So you can see that all of the tests are passing using the refactored version of the customer service. And I made sure to cover all of the possible test cases when I was writing the test. So I just had to replace how I instantiate the customer service and nothing changed about the call to add customer, although we ended up with an improved design. So a few more improvement points that you could make here is for example, you could replace the credit limit calculator implementation that I have here with a strategy pattern if you wanted to you can turn each case of the switch expression into a strategy class that would be responsible for performing the credit limit calculation. For example, we could have a very important client credit limit calculator, an important client credit limit calculator, and then a default credit limit calculator. And although the strategy pattern is definitely valuable, I prefer the switch expression approach that I implemented here because it's much more simpler and there isn't too much logic to encapsulate inside of the individual cases. So I'm going to leave the implementation like this. And the second improvement point is about returning the Boolean value here, which doesn't really tell us what went wrong in the call to add customer. So you could replace this with the result pattern where you return a specific error instance telling you what went wrong. The same would apply here when the customer is under the credit limit and here you would return a success result. If you want to grab the source code for this refactoring exercise, then check the first comment under this video for the instructions. I hope this video was valuable and until next time, stay awesome.